Hey, and welcome back to Everyman Driver alongside Alex Africe. I'm Dave Erickson, and this is an episode of In the Rear View Mirror, where we go beyond the initial drive and review of a pair of vehicles that we reviewed recently. Uh, information we didn't have enough time to go into too much depth during the video. So here are two vehicles for today, Alex. We are looking at the 2013 Acura ILX Premium and the 13 Kia Optima SX. Should be a good one. Stay tuned. Everyman Driver starts now. We're going to begin with the 2013 Kia Optima SX, which I remember being just a fantastic car, really more of a luxury car than what you would recognize with the Kia badge. Absolutely. Uh, and a lot more power than what I think you would notice. There are three trim levels with this car. The first two only got you 200 horsepower, but the SX, ours, 274 horsepower. It too was a actually a, a smaller engine, the two point liter, but it had a turbo. Right. The Kias have come such a long way. First of all, this is basically the most expensive sedan Kia makes. I mean, we had every option and goodie on there and it showed. When, when you're comparing and contrasting these two cars, you've essentially got the Kia, which is a lower end car to begin with, with a whole bunch of options smattered on. And then, you know, when we get to the Acura later, it is sort of a luxury brand, but more of their entry level offering. And with this Kia though, they mask its humble beginnings, if you will, pretty darn well. I mean, if you remember, it had that awesome panoramic sunroof. The engine it had a lot of power and it wasn't just a lot of power. It was, you know, it was fairly smooth, fairly good navigation screen, nicely laid out interior. And, you know, it had some of the sporty features, the wheels and the, you know, spoiler with the chrome tips and everything. So really a nice car. The question is, would you drive a Kia? One of the things I found fascinating on our YouTube channel is the comments where people were, were agreeing with us that if you took away the Kia badge, you wouldn't, you wouldn't know for sure which luxury brand this was associated yeah. with. That really shows you uh, how much time and energy and research they've put into making this car stand out and really compete with the higher luxury brand vehicles. Yeah, and it's still tough though because it is still, we're not that far removed from Kia being really an entry level brand and in a lot of ways they still are. I mean, you have a company like Mercedes that all of a sudden is gonna offer the new uh, A-Class here with, that's gonna start at like $30,000, but then you've got a Kia now that is pushing 35, but it's still an entry level brand. So I know people with Kias who have taken the Kia badge off and they just put a red K badge. So that people, so even then you're going, well, you say you're proud to drive a Kia, but you're taking that Kia badge off. So that's one thing that's hard, especially, I mean, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll address the everyman driver nation. I, I'm a bit of a car snob, if you haven't noticed. And that could be, you know, for, for people who really value cars, it's like ugh, driving that Kia badge might be tough, which is exactly, you know, transitioning into that Acura where all of a sudden you've got an Acura ILX, way less features, less power, still a, still a great driving car, but you're getting that luxury badge. And, and how much does that mean to you? Well, it means more money up front. Yeah. Now the, the SX that we drove in the Kia started off in the $26,000, $27,000 range, and that was just what you see on the outside. But what they put on the inside is what really jacked up the price. Right. And they had three different uh, packages. They had the premium touring package for an extra three grand, uh, technology package for $1,400, and the unlimited package for $3,300. You don't see that really necessarily on the outside. Whereas the Acura ILX that we reviewed, the premium, started off uh, at least our price was just under 30 grand. It did include the premium package, but I, I, I'm guessing based on the information that we received, this was going to be standard. When you well, when you buy the premium, this is what you right, get, right. and it starts off just under 30 grand. Right. So it's going to take a little bit more money to get into this car versus the Kia, and, and maybe that's what Kia's motives are: is to uh, appeal to a broader audience, and then <laughs> maybe nickel and dime them after that to to uh, get your money's worth. Sure, and it, you know, it's just when we, we had a bunch of comments on the YouTube channel when we reviewed the ILX that was, why would anybody buy this car? It's a jumped up Civic that 
in some cases has less options than a Civic. And my standard response was, you're getting an Acura badge if you're a young professional and you're trying to make a bit of a statement, you know, quite frankly, a bit of a statement that, that you're successful, that you have some money, you oftentimes go for a luxury badge. So if you or I see somebody pull up in a Kia, Optima SX Limited, we're gonna go, geez, we know that this is a really nice car. But we review cars for a living. Absolutely. If somebody, yeah. that's what we do. If somebody pulls up in a, in a, you know, in a Kia, most people are gonna go, okay, that guy's driving kind of an entry level car. Whereas if they pull up in the Acura ILX with very few options, we're gonna know, hey, this is Acura's bottom of the barrel. Most of the time they come pretty bare bones. Your boss isn't gonna know that, you know, or the girl you're picking up or whoever it might be, it just doesn't quite send the same statement, at least not yet. Maybe Kia or Hyundai in five or 10 years will be able to say, you know, we're sending out a message of true luxury and of true kind of, you know, quality and everything else. At this point, the brands with this new identity, this new identity of, of more upscale luxury and everything else, it's, they're just not old enough yet. They just can't do it quite yet. And that makes sense when you see some of these mystery cars out and about or they're testing them and they have them in a wrap yeah. and you don't know who they belong to. Right. It kind of tells you, let's look at the car itself. Right. Let's not look at the badge. Right. right. And I wish in some cases they would not include a badge. Yeah. So when they do pull up side by side in a parking lot uh, in different parking stalls, hmm, I want to I want to know more about the car unless you see the badge. Yeah. It's like, oh, now I've got a reputation that I associate with Kia. Right. Unless you do this for a living. Then right. you realize, right. oh, Kia is making some moves. Yeah. Acura, you need to you need to step it up. Right. You can't just hang your hat right. on the A. Right. No, absolutely. And that's why, you know, with that whole car snob comment, I will be the first to admit that brands matter to me. And I think brands really matter to just about everybody out there if they're honest. That being said though, I would take an Optima SX over the ILX simply because you're just getting more car for the money and at some point you have to think to yourself if somebody else doesn't think it's as good a car that's fine I know what I like so this is what I'm gonna drive I think you're gonna buy the Acura because we are a status symbol society people care about our image people care about what we project and I think if you have the option and you have the money to buy either one of these cars in addition to your, your the rest of your fleet and your your uh, hanger of vehicles, you might want to go for the Acura because that's what it says. Yeah. I guess if you had that much money, you might have both. Yeah. Well, and this segues perfectly into make sure to leave a comment on our YouTube channel. As you can see, Dave and I don't really have all the answers on this one. This was part of why this is such a good rear view mirror is because it's so, it's hard to say. Do you take more car with less brand or less brand, but more car. So make sure to leave a comment and let us know which car you would choose. And with that, we will wrap up this episode of In the Rear View Mirror, looking at the 2013 Acura ILX Premium and the 2013 Kia Optima SX. We appreciate you watching. We will see you next time.